Okay, so I've been researching this question of how to become aware of a problem before it becomes too big. And I want to share this with you so that you know when your problems are small enough to handle and what to look for so that you can recognize the problems when they're coming and you can deal with them sooner. All right, so think of your problem as the size of this blue dot. That's it for now. The problem is the dot. It's in this circle. Inside the circle is where the problem gets worse. Outside the circle is where you can be more aware and, and do other things about it. All right, so as you move closer to the center of the circle, you move too close to the problem, then that becomes an issue. And then you end up asking this question. I have a problem and I need a solution. And a perfect example is a client of mine where Canada Revenue Agency or the Revenue Services said that they needed money or they wanted money and all they did actually was take the money. They just took the money right out of the account. That cut cash flow right down. That really cut into business. That's a problem needing a solution. You need to solve the problem of cash flow, otherwise you're out of business, right? So you don't want to be right next to this dot. You want to be able to recognize where you are beforehand. So do you want to know why? Well, here's the thing. If you start doing this, or if you can recognize where you're ignoring things, where you're denying things, and where you're blaming, and where you're complaining, and where you're rationalizing, or where you're resisting, or where you're hiding, those are the things to recognize and know that when you see these types of things, or you feel like you're doing these types of things, that you're not moving in the direction of solving the problem because you're ignoring and hiding, blaming, rationalizing, you know, and here's the thing. Ask yourself, do I take 100% responsibility for my life? You know, ask yourself, have I ever blamed anyone for any circumstances in my life? Have I ever complained about anything? You know, I think we all complain at some point in time, but you know, this is the question to ask yourself, you know, and here's the thing. If you want to be 100% responsible for your life, then you have to give up blaming, you have to give up complaining, and you have to take total responsibility. And that means for all of your results, both your successes and your failures or perceived failures. You know, and that is a prerequisite for creating a full and happy life. And it's only by acknowledging that you have created everything up until now that you can take charge of creating the future you want. And you know, if something doesn't turn out as planned, you have to ask yourself, how did I create that? What was I thinking? What were my beliefs? What did I say or not say? What did I do or not do to create that result? How did I get the other person to act that way? What do I need to do differently next time? Or what do I need to do ne uh, differently next time to get the result I want, right? Ask yourself these questions. You know, everything you think, say, and do needs to become intentional and align with your purpose, your values, and your goals. And you have control over only three things in your life. The thoughts you think, the images you visualize, and the actions you take, which is your behavior. And how you use these three things determines everything you experience. You know, and if you don't like what you're producing or experiencing, you have to change your responses. Change your negative thoughts to positive ones. Change what you daydream about. Change your habits. Change what you read. Change your friends. Change how you talk to yourself and others. And you know, here's the thing about blaming, and we all tend to blame at some point in time or another, you know. <laughs> there's a lot of blaming going on now in the media. Unfortunately, it looks like there's a lot of problems in Hollywood, uh, which uh, with respect to uh, people being, uh, um, you know, sexually uh, uh, out of tune and, uh, you know, not doing uh, such good things. And honestly, I don't pay attention to the news, but every time I look at Google, I see it. <laughs> but here's the thing, you know, when we blame, you know, blaming is a waste of time. No matter how much fault you find with another person, and regardless of how much you blame him or her, it will not change you, right? It won't change you. You know, think about this. People only complain about things that they can do something about. We don't complain about the things that we have no power over. Have you ever heard anyone complain about gravity? <laughs> no, never. You know, have you ever heard, you know, an elderly person, you know, who's bent over and walking with a walker down the street complain about gravity? You know, of course not. But why not? Well, because we accept it as being normal and out of our control. 
Well, there are other things in our lives that are like that too, but we think that we can change them. And, you know, we have to realize that we don't change others. We, we change ourselves. So if you learn, you know, let's say you learn to replace complaining with making requests and taking action that will achieve your desired outcomes. You know, that is what successful people do. You know, that, that is what works. If you find yourself like in a situation and you don't like it, you know, either you work to make it better or you get out of the situation, you leave, right? Like we simply allow things to happen to us by our inaction or our unwillingness to do what is necessary to create or maintain what we want. And here's the thing, moving out of this type of situation, ignoring, blaming, hiding, rationalizing, denying, complaining, that's not easy. You know, though this is a simple principle, it's not necessarily easy to implement. It requires concentrated awareness, dedicated discipline, and a willingness to experiment and take risks. You have to be willing to pay attention to what you are doing and to the results you're producing. All right, so how do we move out of this victim loop? This ignoring, denying, blaming, rationalizing, resistance, hiding, this victim loop. It is a victim loop because when we're in it, we feel like victims. We feel like we can't get out. We feel like it's out of our control, right? And as the victim loop expands or as the problem becomes bigger, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it feels like a pressure cooker. And then what happens is the best of us comes out. You know, if you squeeze an orange, no matter how you squeeze it, it will produce orange juice. But what happens when you get squoze? What happens when you get pressured? How do you respond? How do you react, in fact? Response is probably not the one, the word, it's reaction. How do you react? You know, because you're under pressure cooker. Whatever comes out could be anger, could be frustration, could be blaming, complaining, you know? You have to recognize that. And that's an automatic response. It's a chronic way of thinking and doing things. And that pressure cooker is there for a reason. It teaches you to grow. So here's the thing. When you're outside of the circle, when you're outside of the circle here, right? When you see yourself outside of the circle, you can ask questions because you're asking questions, seeking an answer. Remember when you were inside the circle and you're next to the problem, you need a solution. You have a problem and you need a solution. But when you're outside, you can ask questions and seek an answer, right? Because you're being objective. So here's the thing. <clears throat> inside the circle, we ignore, we hide, we blame, rationalize, resist. We deny, we complain, but outside the circle, we can recognize what we're doing. We can notice what we're doing. We can notice what's happening. Stand back, step back, be objective, right? We can take 100% responsibility and say, okay, I'm part of this. I've created this. I can do something about it. We can forgive. We can let things go. We can not bother to fight with somebody. Just let it go. Right. And we can have self-reflection. So for outside the circle, we can reflect. We can have self-reflection, self-awareness. Right. And start to make changes. And then we can learn. And when we learn, then we can move into a new state of mind and then we take action. Right. So when you're outside the circle, that's what's called accountability loop. So accountability loop is when you can take all these types of actions, recognize and respond and take responsibility, forgive, self-reflection, self-analysis, self-awareness, self and learning and take action. You can do all those things outside of the circle. Why? Because the problem is in the circle. You're not in the problem yet. So the best time to be dealing with a problem is when it's not too big, when it's small, when you still recognize it's a problem, not when it starts to to grow and it starts to become an issue and you notice it and people start talking to you about it and you're feeling bad about it. I mean, the easiest way to know when a problem is a problem is when you feel bad. Because if you're not feeling good, then you know that's a direct symbol, a direct sign to you something is out of alignment. And if you don't deal with it, it's gonna grow because you're just denying it. It's a delusional state. Denial doesn't work have to deal with the issues that come up. That's why when we have a cut, we deal with it. We bandage it up, we seal it up, we cauterize the cut, whatever it is, and we heal it. The problems are the same thing. Problems in our life are the same thing. We have to deal with them. We have to put them to rest. We have to work on them and we need some accountability and work through it. All right. So here's the thing. When you're outside of the loop, 
here's what the thing, here's what you have. When you have accountability, you have a little bit more control. You can be more calm. You can be more confident. You can be more aware. You can observe. You can be objective, right? You can be objective instead of saying, oh my God, this, what do I do? You know, this is a big problem, right? And I know what it's like when you have a problem and you can't be objective, right? I've been in situations like that where I saw a car accident and I went and helped this elderly lady in a car and she had broken her arm. You could see it was broken. You know, the, the bone was pushing against the skin and she was in shock, you know, but, um, you know, I could be objective about it. And she was just, you know, concerned about the food that she was bringing over to her son's house. And it was in a bag and it was pasta and it had spilled inside the car. Well, it hadn't spilled outside the bag. So I was able to tip the bag and close the lid and say, oh, there, it's, it's okay now. It's okay. But realizing that, you know, she had broken her arm. She was going to the hospital. She would not be going to her son's house. But I could be objective in that situation, be calm because it's not me, even though I felt badly for her. I, I felt, you know, compassionate about her problem and, and that she had crashed. And, and this uh, was a situation that was not going to get good in the, in the short term. Uh, anyway, so then, you know, you can be objective, you can plan, you can take action. These are the kinds of things you can do to move out of the circle. Otherwise, it's like a vacuum. The problem will suck you in like a vacuum. And as you get closer and closer to the middle, then it becomes an issue and you can't work through it as easily. You have to then work hard. Right? When you're outside of the circle, you can work less hard. You don't have to struggle as much. Okay, so again, if you're inside the circle and you know you are and you're near the problem, then that's where you're going to need a solution. But you can become objective if you get some help. It's always good to have some reflection, some help, some perspective, some accountability, some commitment helps you get outside the circle. If you're outside of the circle, you can look in and you can ask questions. And that's the best time to be working on a problem. So depending on where you are in your problem today, you have to realize you have to start asking your questions, ask yourself some questions, and maybe ask some other questions, you know? I mean, if you ask, let's say if you ask yourself, your family, your friends, your colleagues, your managers, your teachers, your coaches, uh, your clients for feedback, you know, let's say, you know, if you ask them, is what I'm, is what I'm doing working? Could I be doing it better? Is there something more I should be doing that I'm not doing now? Is there something I'm doing that I should stop doing? You know, how do you see me limiting myself? And ask yourself these questions. How am I creating or allowing this to happen? What am I doing that's working that I need to be doing more of? And should I do more practicing, meditating, delegating, trusting, listening, or asking questions? You know, ask yourself these questions but also get some perspective. It's always great to have different perspective. And if you can't get perspective on yourself, then it's always good to ask outside sources and get that support. All right, so again, I just wanted to teach you about how to recognize a problem before it becomes too big. And I hope that this served you well, and I look forward to speaking with you soon.